This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I thought I'd try an experiment. We're going to call this Toxic Bitcoin Saturday, and what I'm going to do is answer many of the questions that have come up in the comment section for the preceding week. So you can let me know what you think of this format and whether I should do it again. We're going to start with a question from Kevin Dula9832. This person, Kevin, I believe is actually criticizing XRP. He's saying, hey, there are some people that are saying XRP is decoupling from BTC fools. And I agree with Kevin if that is indeed what he's saying is a critique of XRP. My response to him was this, XRP is a centralized ship coin. My dog's crap in the backyard is decoupling from Bitcoin too, but not sure why that matters. As I've said before in this channel, correlations come and go. Pay attention instead. It's very important to pay attention instead to the underlying fundamentals of the asset, especially if you plan on holding it for more than a few weeks or months. Bitcoin is very, very different from fiat money. It's very different from altcoins and tech stocks and bonds, etc. Though at times it may be correlated with some of them. I remember over the past couple of years, people saying Bitcoin is just a tech stock. It actually is not a tech stock. It's not equity. It is not equity in a corporation. And at times it's been correlated with risk assets like tech stocks, but it's very, very different. And over the long term, fundamentals do matter. Bitcoin is a one of a kind, scarce digital asset. So whether XRP is decoupling from Bitcoin doesn't really matter because XRP is a highly centralized ship coin. Here is a comment from Wargasm54. I'm a no coiner. I only hold Solana, which by the way is up 80% in three weeks. You notice how he picks the time frame for this rather than noting how much it's down from the highs. I don't hate Bitcoin. I just don't want to deploy that much capital for a meager four to five X. I've seen this sort of comment before. It always ends in tears, unfortunately. So my response to him was, so you're jumping in and out of ship coins, paying short term cap gains taxes in an effort to increase the amount of fiat that you own. You do you. Here's a reminder. If you trade ship coins, altcoins, you are guaranteed to underperform Bitcoin over the long term, especially if your holding period for these trades is less than a year and you're paying short term capital gains tax rates, which are equal to your bracket, your top bracket for income taxes, at least in the US. Everyone seems to think that they can trade altcoins to make more Bitcoin, but it never works out that way over the long term. If it's worked out that way for you so far, you haven't been clever. You've just been lucky and it's best that you recognize this right away and also recognize that if you keep doing this sort of activity one of these days, you are going to give it all back guaranteed. I've seen this happen many times for commenters in the channel. You might also get caught holding the bag like holders of FTT, which was the FTX exchange coin, Luna, etc. It just takes one of these to wipe out huge amounts of your capital. And there's no guarantee that you'll be able to get out in time, especially if it's a game of musical chairs like crypto is. Diversifying your capital across different piles of dog crap is not diversification. It's diversification. It's still dog crap that you're holding. Your coins could be easy, easily be frozen or lost by the crypto exchange while you're waiting for your fiat gains. So it's very important and you'll eventually get to this level if you spend enough time in the space. It's very important to value your wealth in Bitcoin. Don't value it in altcoins. Don't value it in gold or real estate or fiat. Value your wealth in Bitcoin and your wealth is going up if you are increasing your stash of Bitcoin of sats over time. Here's an important reminder as well. If you're not holding Bitcoin in cold storage on a hardware wallet or in multisig, you are not ready for what's coming. Don't assume that you'll always be able to trade out of your outs or fiat into Bitcoin and then withdraw to a cold storage solution. That window's rapidly closing as I discussed in Thursday's video. You're running out of time, which I'll link to in the description notes below. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment and share this video. Here's a comment from Mr. Pulpez. I think gold bugs are right when they say that gold is superior to superior than Bitcoin is superior to Bitcoin as a store of value. Bitcoin price keeps going up. That's just a terrible thing, isn't it? Bitcoin price keeps going up while the price of gold remains more or less stable. My response, did you forget about inflation? Unless gold goes up at, at at least the rate of inflation over time, it loses purchasing power and is thus a bad store of value. Gold has gone nowhere for a decade, which and this decade has included the most money printing in human history. This is a really sad thing. The conclusion I come to from the last few comments is that gold bugs and ship coiners are definitely not sending their best, or maybe they are, and if so, that's a really sad situation. 
Here's a comment from uh, Sergei Anglinov 9722, and he's trying to pump Litecoin, obviously, LTC. He says, everyone tends to flock to digital silver and digital gold, Litecoin and Bitcoin, when things aren't going well. Litecoin is basically the same as Bitcoin. Actually, it's not. It's a completely different asset that trades on a completely different network. Both have proof of work consensus and both have limited supply of coins. Only that Litecoin is lighter, swifter, and hugely undervalued as compared with Bitcoin. Hugely undervalued, that is an assumption, as we'll see. Litecoin being a digital commodity provides a decent inflation hedge, not a great inflation hedge, obviously, as well because there will be mined only a limited number of 84 million Litecoins in total. My response to him, don't forget to tell the folks how Litecoin keeps losing value against Bitcoin, how the silver gold thing is just pure marketing because Bitcoin is highly divisible. This is something you'll often see for Litecoin or Casper, some of these. They say Bitcoin is gold and my crypto that I'm trying to dump on you is silver. This stems from a fundamental misunderstanding of the gold standard and how bimetallism worked, where silver was used for very small denominations for small purchases, simply because gold is very heavy and it's very valuable and it's hard to shave off a little piece to buy a cup of coffee. The thing is, when it comes to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, you actually don't need silver because these are digital currencies. You can have as many decimal places as you want, and you can always change the software slightly to increase the divisibility. So what you have when you have digital gold, there's absolutely no need for digital silver. And when someone's trying to sell you digital silver to Bitcoin's gold, you know that they're either entirely ignorant of precious metals and how bimetallism in the gold standard worked, or they are a scammer. I go on in my comment to point out how Litecoin has much slower final settlement time than Bitcoin. It has faster block time. I believe it's every two and a half minutes you get a new block compared to Bitcoin, which gets a new block every 10 minutes. But when it comes to final settlement, in other words, having a reasonable assurance that your transaction will not be reversed and the block rewritten and orphaned, uh, Bitcoin has a much faster settlement time. In fact, Litecoin, as I point out, has even slower settlement than Doge, which is pretty pathetic. If we take a look at Litecoin versus Bitcoin, when this chart moves down, that means that Litecoin is losing value against Bitcoin. It's been absolutely brutal. And the more you scan out, uh, scroll out, the more brutal it gets. So if you're holding Litecoin, you really don't know what you're doing, especially if you think it's silver. And as I said, it has much slower settlement times than Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Litecoin is 17 times slower than Bitcoin, as is Dogecoin. Litecoin, the equivalent settlement period is 16 hours and 52 minutes for uh, compared to Bitcoin, where the final settlement uh, time is close to an hour, about 58 minutes based on recent block times. And it's funny to see here, Bitcoin Cash, Bcash, has, uh, is even slower than any of these, even though it uses the same proof of work algorithm, SHA-256, as Bitcoin, but it takes, it's 144 times slower than Bitcoin. It takes five days and 20 hours to get the same final settlement uh, finality that you would get with Bitcoin. So don't be fooled by all of these metaphors of digital silver to digital gold. We have a comment here, a great video. So is the Coinbase wallet true cold storage? It says if you lose the 12 word key code, it's gone forever. But does that make it actual cold storage or them not being able to control it? I think this is a great question. He's referring to the Coinbase wallet, which is a software wallet that you can download. Unfortunately, this thing also uh, provides uh, storage for crypto and NFTs, etc. So it has a wider attack service surface. If we take a look here, we can see we can download it for iOS, for Android, or for Chrome as a Chrome extension. So the problem with this, this is a software wallet. It's a hot wallet. And this is why the Coinbase wallet should not ever be used for Bitcoin cold storage. Here are the number of reasons. First of all, it's made by Coinbase, which is a crappy crypto casino whose main business model is wrecking consumers by getting them to trade dog coins or lock up their ETH with them. So it's not a very credible company. Number two, the Coinbase wallet also handles ship coins, as we said, altcoins and NFTs, and thus has a wider attack surface, surface than Bitcoin only wallets. Number three, it's not open source, so who knows what lurks inside the code. Number four, it's a hot wallet. In other words, it's connected to the internet because you download it on your phone, which is almost always connected to the internet or a web browser. And even if you have a phone, you're using it online. Uh, you're using it completely offline, I should have said. At any point, if you accidentally turn it on, you could lose your Bitcoin because then it has a momentary connection to the internet. You should never store large amounts of Bitcoin in a hot wallet. 
which is a wallet that is connected to the internet or could be easily connected to the internet. Hot wallets should never be used for cold storage. That's why they're called hot wallets, and that's why cold storage is cold, called cold storage. Cold storage, as we said, means no internet connection and your private keys never touch the internet. So use a cold card hardware wallet or a Blockstream Jade hardware wallet instead. And with these hardware wallets, which are Bitcoin only wallets, your private keys never touch the internet. In other words, all the signing of transactions when you move your Bitcoin is done offline inside of the wallet. Coinbase wallet, I thought this was a funny note that I wanted to highlight. As of January 2023, Coinbase wallet will no longer be supporting the following assets and networks due to low usage, Bcash, uh, ETH Classic, XLM, and XRP. So this tells you Coinbase is obviously a very profit motivated corporation. And this tells you what the real activity is for these coins. They're basically dead coins that no one is using. Co even Coinbase doesn't want to offer support them for them anymore in its Coinbase wallet, which is pretty funny. Finally, I wanted to talk about this comment, this response to my video, you're running out of time with Bitcoin, where I talked about how there could be various parallel systems. There could be Bitcoin that's sort of trapped inside of the US banking system. So you're not allowed to withdraw it from Coinbase, but you would be allowed to send it to JP Morgan or Wells Fargo or Bank of America or something like this. And this is why it's very important to withdraw your Bitcoin before this bifurcation happens. Escobar Del Rio responded, scary to think that some Bitcoin may be permanently trapped in the legacy financial system. And I responded, I don't think it's quite that bad. It won't be trapped there permanently because the fiat financial system will fail as well. The US government will spend or lose Bitcoin too, as well the banks. Here's the thing, lots of people, corporations, countries are going to do lots of different things with Bitcoin. It's an open, permissionless network, an asset that anyone can use as they see fit. We can't stop them, nor should we want to, because this is free money, it's neutral money, and you should be able to do what you like with your own money that you control the keys to. Bitcoin is neutral money for the world, and a lot of it is going to end up trapped inside of various places, like the US banking system, getting trapped on Apple Pay, for example, at Coinbase Custody, which is going to be the backing, the custodian, for the BlackRock, Bitcoin ETF, etc. Will it stay tra trapped there forever? No, definitely not. A lot of it is going to be withdrawn. It's going to be stolen. It's going to be lost. There are going to be hacks of these custody solutions. And at some point, I would expect the US government or another government to probably confiscate all the Bitcoin, the real Bitcoin that's being held by Coinbase that's, that's sitting there under their custody. Maybe in five years from now, 10 years, 15 years from now, not any time soon. There are obviously constitutional protections against this, but when there is a crisis, when there's a state of emergency, as there was in the Great Depression, FDR confiscated all Americans' gold, and the US government will not hesitate to do the same thing in a crisis with Bitcoin. And when you have a honeypot like Coinbase, where there's a lot of Bitcoin sitting there, that will be one of the first targets. Does this mean that you shouldn't own any Bitcoin? On the contrary, it means that you should actually own as much Bitcoin, as much real BTC as you can, while you can still front run the US government. The US government has something like 150,000, 200,000 Bitcoin. They're still auctioning them off. They have no idea what they're doing. But at some point, the US government's gonna become very greedy and they're gonna want your Bitcoin and everyone's Bitcoin. And if it's in your own hardware wallet, if it's in cold storage and you control the keys, they're not gonna be able to get it from you. They can steal it from a few people, but they can't go door to door and steal it from millions and millions of people by putting a gun to their head. Just don't leave your Bitcoin on Coinbase. Don't hold a Bitcoin IOU like the BlackRock ETF. You should hold the real thing in cold storage, either in multi-sig or single sig on a hardware wallet. And if any Bitcoin is indeed permanently lost, as will probably happen if the keys are lost, this would only serve to increase the value of each person's BTC holdings in a pro rata fashion. It's a little bit like a donation to the network when Bitcoin is lost or when people uh, destroy their private keys and the Bitcoin cannot be moved again. So Bitcoin is like gold in many ways, although much better, much more portable, much easier to assay, etc. Bitcoin, like gold, is money for everyone, including enemies. So when we talk about how Bitcoin may be permanently trapped in the legacy financial system, this is of course true for gold as well, and it doesn't hurt its value at all. We have China stacking gold. We have North Korea stacking gold. There's nothing we can do about it. Eventually their gold will be lost or stolen or spent 
or sink to the bottom of the ocean or something like this. But gold is neutral money as well. It's very bad money compared to Bitcoin. But this is the analogy. There's gold trapped in lots of different places. There will be Bitcoin, quote unquote, trapped in many different places. But this is what happens with money. People want to hoard it. People want to spend it. People want to accumulated. Just in case you're wondering about gold versus Bitcoin, I want to remind gold bugs who are watching this that gold has been a very, very terrible investment versus Bitcoin. It's basically gone to zero against Bitcoin, and this will continue. So make sure you're not holding a fake, old-fashioned, old monetary technology, which is yellow shiny rocks, also known as gold. But you should be holding BTC, and you should be holding your own private keys. You should hold it on a hardware wallet where no one, not even the U.S. government or any other hostile government can take it from you. Be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Especially let me know if you enjoyed this format. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.